Hello, it's Tuesday, May 16th, Topical Tuesday, where every Tuesday I share something that is in the news and related to how it can help you to grow your business. So, uh, and before we do, as always, well, first of all, as always, I am not wearing, as always, my uh, typical, ridiculous, silly, red Hawaiian shirt. Today, I am uh, wearing my, proudly wearing the New York Mets uniform and hat. Because today is the day that my beloved but hapless New York Mets are in town here in Arizona. And I have the tickets and the parking pass to, uh, to go see the Mets tonight. And they were able to scrounge out an entire four measly hits in yesterday's game here in Arizona. So hopefully they saved up some uh, law of averages or whatever and they're due to uh, get a few more tonight. Although they did have a home run, a pinch home run in the last inning. So... Instead of just scoring one run the entire game, they scored a couple more and only lost by some ridiculous amount, as usual. But I digress. Today's Rhino of the Day, in honor that I am about to talk about something with an international um, bent to it, I'm sharing my Rhino of the Day is international. It is the Rhino on the 25 Paisa coin from India. So this is a genuine 25 Paisa coin from India. Whatever 25 paisa can buy you, I predict uh, they can't, uh, it cost me more to buy this rhino than the 25 paisa that it could be worth to spend on whatever in wherever in India. So let's get right to it today. Topical Tuesday, something that's been in the news for, I don't know, a couple of days now at least, is this uh, beauty pageant it was on the other night, Miss uh, crap, I forget exactly, Miss, uh, I'll, it'll come to me, or maybe somebody let me know if you're here, uh, Miss, uh, Miss USA, no, yeah, maybe, Miss World, Miss, something, okay, something about, like, you, you win, yeah, I think you, it was the Miss USA, and if you win it, you go on to the Miss World, or Miss Universe, or Miss something international, hence the international 25 paisa coin, with the rhino on it, so, Here's the deal. I'm not going to get into, of course, all the whatever the heck these controversial comments were, whether or not, you know, everyone ought to have health care, when, of course, the argument should all be about health. They're all, everyone's just talking about health insurance. Like, they really should talk about the ridiculous cost of health care in the U.S., which is the true issue, because, of course, if you did something, anything at all, to bring down the over ridiculously overpriced cost of health care in America, that would bring down the cost of health insurance for crying out loud. So I love how the politicians love to, to argue about health insurance when they know that the issue is actually health care that people care about. I don't know about you, but I'm not uh, really, uh, I don't really care that much about how much profit insurance companies make or who pays for insurance companies to insure people. I care about health care. People get cared for. Anyway, so she made some kind of comments, and then she changed her mind or clarified the comments or whatever. She made another one about like, oh, feminism, I'm not all about, you know, women power, or whatever, just women should be equal or whatever. These were like incendiary, you know, inflammatory, not politically correct, basically. They're not politically correct. They're against the typical liberal mainstream media uh, 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 Institu uh, uh, educational institutions, you know, all the brainwashing going on of the younger Americans uh, that uh, that they, she was on, like, you know, she's all nervous. She's got, like, a few seconds to synthesize what the question is and come up with an answer and maintain her pause and speak English and have a full sentence. Otherwise, she knows this thing's going to go all over the place. She's going to get voted against and lose the pageant and all that kind of stuff. Up, oh, the FedEx guy is coming. Very exciting. So, um... So, you know, come on now. She's all nervous and whatever. She says something, she goes and clarifies it, whatever. Here's the point. What made that get all this attention for this pageant? Okay, because pageant ratings on TV have been going into the tubes in recent years. They're way down. And so years ago, the pageant organizer said, how can we get the ratings up? And they came to the conclusion they want to create controversy controversy gets attention see and so regardless of whatever comments that this miss whichever one the winner of that won in this uh, recent competition it's the person that came up with the question 
is the brilliant people that instigated the controversy, knowing that if we ask these incendiary questions, and of course I didn't watch the thing, so and maybe I should have looked up a list of all the questions they asked everybody, but because I'm sure that these weren't the only two uh, sensitive, inflammatory issues that could create a, a lot of controversies. Feminism, health care, who knows what else they asked. But I'm sure that the organizers could have asked questions like, um, you know, would you like world peace? Something everyone could agree with. Or if you had three wishes, what would you wish for? Or uh, who do you think is the greatest living person of all time? You know, whatever. You can come up with questions that have no controversy and let your ratings continue to go in the tank and have, it would be nowhere on Twitter. I wouldn't be making a video about it. Wouldn't be on YouTube. Wouldn't be on the news. Wouldn't be in newspapers. Wouldn't be on websites. Wouldn't be anywhere if they asked that. So they brilliantly got together and said, we got to ask some controversial questions so we can get attention and try and rescue this failing broadcast of beauty passions. So how does this apply to you as a business owner? Hopefully your business is not failing. But hopefully you wake up every day with the attitude as if it is. You have fire in your belly as if like, hey, I haven't accomplished all that I can. Not comparing yourself to others or to the average this or the top that or the lower this or the whatever, your competition. But to yourself, your own potential. Are you living up to your own potential every day? Are you doing as much as you can to reach your best that you know you could be? And if you're already there, congratulations. You're probably not watching this video. But if you have that fire... One of the things you can do to improve and grow your business, put more money in your pocket, help everybody, is to be get more attention. And you can get more attention, surefire, by creating controversy. So now how do you do this in a practical way? And I'll, you know, obviously message me or contact me, Steve at Steve Cypress, or shoot me a Facebook message while I help with this. But a couple of examples. So here's what I'm not saying. You don't go out and start talking about, you know, to put a big sign on, the, on your retail store window uh, pro certain religion or anti-religion you don't go uh, um, making incendiary pol political comments all over your when you go to someone's house to fix a boiler you don't walk in and go like uh, wear, wear a tr you know I love Trump shirt or I love Hillary shirt or wear, you don't do that kind of stuff what you want you can if you want of course but what you really want to do and of course that depends on your who so I should say that with a grain of salt. If you, your ideal target client, customer, patient, member is a you know, far left, liberal, leaning, whatever, then by all means wear a Barry, 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 uh, what's a Sanders, Bernie Sanders shirt all over the place. If you are, if your whole, t you want to attract all the loony right wing whatevers, then walk around wearing an I love Breitbart shirt or whatever, or Steve Bannon's my hero or whatever. So. Uh, but here's an elegant way to do it effectively and without creating all kinds of craziness. The key is you want to pick your controversy against, you want to pick the villain, the, the brunt of the controversy, uh, uh, somewhat something or someone that basically you get a ton of agreement if not everybody agrees that that's a bad thing and you come out against it. So I'll give you an example right now is the government. Government, but not many people are a big fan of the government. I mean, you can't, of course, obviously the last presidential election showed, you can't believe anything polls say uh, it, it, exactly, but how far off the mark could they be? They say things like government, people's trust in government is like in the single digits. So even if it's way off, that is still a rather low uh, viewpoint that people have of government. So you could pick the government as the villain and make controversial statements about the government as the villain. And you're not going to get much pushback from people going like, oh, but I love the government. That law that's ridiculous is great. Okay, so let's say you're a heating and air guy. There are all kinds of regulations that have come out in the last 10, 20 years, depending on where you are, that have uh, made it ridiculous for, say, the disposal of Freon. If you, or, or you're, a, you know, you're in a freezing unit that you've replaced. Well, now you've got to dispose of that. In the old days, you, you know, you'll drop it off. Now, all my clients tell me, like, now it's all kinds of jump hoops you got to jump through and you got to pay all kinds of charges and make sure you're disposing of this certain way. And they're like, so what can I do? My prices have to keep going up. 
because the cost of doing this business just keeps going up out of my control. So that's a statement you make. Go make a video about that. Put it on your website. Put it on your YouTube. Put it all over social media. Put it in your newsletter. Put it on your, make a blog post about it. Create this villain of government regulations that are crippling small businesses and causing you to have to raise prices. I got a high, you know, if you're a doctor, any kind of medical at all, you've got to hire at least one extra person in your office just to deal with all the BS of Obamacare and all the extra regulations and all the codes and all the lines, all the everything. And like, oh, I need extra people in my office deal just to deal with this crap. And so therefore, I've got to, I can't spend as much time with my patients or I can't, I have to see more patients, I can't spend as much time as each one, or I have to raise my rates or whatever. But demonize government for doing that with the regulations, and most people will agree, yeah, that's not a great thing. So that's just one example, and you can do this over and over with, I'll, I, you know, again, for the sake of today's video, I'll just give you that one, but contact me, I got a whole bunch more. You want to create controversy to get attention, you see as an example here on Topical Tuesday, the latest example, it's not the contestant on the beauty pageant that, that walked, she walked right into it. It was the people that run the beauty pageant that didn't have to see this video to understand that, hey, we got to get some attention. We got to create some controversy is a great way to do that. Let's just put out some controversial questions and watch our attention go through the roof, all the tweets and all the videos and all the exposure on the news. Otherwise, do you think I would even know? that there was a beauty pageant on the other night? Would you even know such a thing? Give me a break. So I predict they got 20, 50, 100 times the exposure for their beauty pageant. But, and, and I saw the women. I mean, these are spectacularly beautiful women. I can see how somebody might want to now. And, and the, the, my, my beautiful wife, Michelle, was like, look at that gown. I mean, you know, if you like watching it for the fashions or to hear what they say or to see them parade around or... I don't never, you know, I don't know what it is, what what about them? Although I've known a few uh, beauty uh, contestants and pageants and winners and all, and you know the work they do is crazy to go through this stuff, but it's what they do. And obviously, I'm um, one that could never even think about being in any beauty anything. So uh, far be it for me to criticize or even say this. There's, I have my hobbies, they have theirs. Everyone has their interests. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying most people would never hear about it if it wasn't for this controversy. Is the same thing happening in your business? Are most people in your area not even hearing about you because you're just putting out milk toast, plain vanilla statements, hey, we're the best, we're owner-operated, we've been around for this many years, we do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, call us, uh, you know, meaningless uh, slogans, uh, you've tried the rest, now try the best, and, you know, peace of mind, we deliver, we love our customers, we treat you like family. That's all great stuff that everyone can agree with. It can't get you any attention, okay? Be controversial, get out there, get attention. In fact, hey, who's here? Hey, Jerry, thanks for being here. Milk toast comments. So should I, yes, should I, uh, meaningless slogan, should I put in uh, some milk toast comments like, hey, Steve, nice video. Uh, it would be much cooler to go like, hey, Steve, what an inflammatory, controversial, crazy video you just shot, because maybe that could get some attention. Speaking of which, Jerry Ajinsky right here is one of the world's experts on creating videos that get ridiculous amounts of views and I mean, look them up on YouTube or just look up New York uh, personal injury attorney and watch him come up with, what do you have, 20,000 <laughs> videos or something? Like, uh, if anyone knows how to do it, Jerry knows how to do it. And if anyone knows the difference between how to not get attention, how to get attention, contact me, contact Jerry. He'll help you out. And, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how outrageous my comments were. Medical malpractice. I apologize. I said personal injury, and of course, as if I haven't watched enough of Jerry's uh, uh, videos to know that it's medical malpractice for crying out loud. So if for some bizarre reason you or anyone you know or care about is in some kind of hospital in New York and the doctor leaves in a sponge or does whatever, which I'm sure Jerry could quote you on how often that happens all the time and whatever, He's the one to contact. But on a broader scale, if you want to implement what I'm sharing here, what I'm suggesting you do is to put out some videos with some controversy, with attention. Absolutely, Jerry will help you do that. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, Jerry, for being here live. Anybody else? Thanks for uh, anyone here on the replay. I am about to take my Mets tickets and head out to the big game and hopefully 
see my beloved Mets get at least as many as hits as they got yesterday. Four, four hits. Yeah. Go Mets. Thanks for being here. I will be back tomorrow. Man, you know, I want to I want to tell people what tomorrow's is all about and then I continually forget what the heck I'm talking about. So, I don't remember. Whoa, it's Wisdom Wednesday. That's kind of ironic that my brain does not remember that tomorrow is Wisdom Wednesday and I have a really cool piece of wisdom to share with you tomorrow. So, I hope you'll be with me here and something real special for Thursday. We won't have our regular throwback Thursday. We are going to have a live interview at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time with Dustin Matthews, a master marketer and an expert in selling in presentations, whether it's online in a teleseminar or a webinar, or it's in person on a stage somewhere, or your own event, someone else's event. He is amazing at this. He's helped so many people bring in millions of dollars, and you can be there 4.30 p.m. be right here for my live video on Facebook on Thursday. This Thursday in two days, May 18th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Ask Dustin any question you want. You don't want to miss that. So I'll see you tomorrow for Wisdom Wednesday. See you Thursday for the Dustin Matthews interview. Thanks for being here again today. And, uh, hey, David Phelps. Highly <laughs> controversial. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, it's controversial to root for the Mets. That's for sure. Most people like to root for a winner. So at least I got that going for me. All right. Thanks, David. Great seeing you. Great seeing Jerry. Anyone else here on the replay, thanks for being here, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another fantastic video for you.